Today I want to share with you how to pickle green beans. And then if you want to go ahead and put them in the refrigerator, that's perfect. But if you want to go one step further and learn how to water bath can them, I'm going to walk you through the whole process step by step. And if you open the description underneath this video, there'll be all the timestamps so you can jump around to whatever you need, plus a link to the printable recipe. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Whether you grow your green beans or buy them at the farmer's market or at your local supermarket, pickling them is a great, tasty way to prepare them. Now let's go over all the ingredients that you're going to need to pickle these green beans. But you don't need to write anything down. Just open the description under this video, look for the link that says recipe, and that'll take you over to my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel, where you can print the recipe out or read it online. Now these green beans have been all washed and they've had the stems and the tails removed. Now, if you want to do this in a very quick way, you don't need to remove the tail. That is the tender part of the green bean, and if you want, you can leave that on. But you do need to remove the stems. Now, for this recipe, where we're going to make six pints of pickled green beans, you're going to need about three and a half pounds of green beans. Now, I've got a little more than three and a half pounds here, but any extra I have, I'll just cook up for dinner. Next, you're going to need a third of a cup of canning and pickling salt. Now, the reason why you want to use canning and pickling salt, specifically if you're canning, is because you want just salt when you're canning. You don't want any anti-caking agents, you don't want any other chemicals that may interfere with the canning process. So that's why it's very important to make sure you use canning and pickling salt. It's just salt. Also, if you're just pickling these and you're going to put them in your refrigerator, canning and pickling salt will give you the purest flavor. Plus, canning and pickling salt is the first line of defense, so to speak, to help you keep your green beans crisp. Now next you're going to need five cups of vinegar. Now if you're water bath canning, you want to make sure that your vinegar is a 5% acidity vinegar. Anything lower than that would risk spoilage of your canned item. Now you can use any flavor vinegar you want. You just want to make sure that it's 5% acidity. What I've got here is white vinegar. And it's just your regular white vinegar. You don't need to buy the 9% acidity one that often says pickling vinegar. The 5% acidity is perfect. Now if you're pickling these to put them in your refrigerator, this white vinegar, this 5% white vinegar will work great, or any other flavored vinegar that you want to use will work great too. However, since you're putting them into your refrigerator, you're not as concerned about making sure that you have the perfect acidity level. So if you want to use your homemade apple cider vinegar for this process, you can certainly do that. But when it comes to water bath canning, I would recommend that you not use homemade vinegar because you don't know the, necessarily the exact level of acidity. Next, you're going to want two cups of water. Now this is your basic brine mixture, but to this you can add additional flavors. To my brine mixture, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of chili flakes because this is going to give the brine a little bit of a kick. But if you don't want these to be spicy, you can definitely leave this out. Next, you're going to need a saucepan that we're going to use to make the brine, but you want to make sure that your saucepan is something that's called non-reactive because we're going to be using so much vinegar. Now what I've got here is stainless steel. You could also use enameled cast iron. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my water, and then I'm going to go ahead and add in my vinegar. I get all five cups in there. Then I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle in my chili flakes. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my pickling and canning salt. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this over to my stove and bring it up to a boil. Now what I've got here is a pint sized jar and it's a wide mouth pint sized jar because this makes it easy to pack your string beans in here and then it also makes it easy to serve them. 
Now, if you're not gonna be water bath canning these, then what you'll wanna do is to make sure that your jars are nice and clean. You can either run them through your dishwasher or you can just wash them in warm soapy water, give them a good rinse and let them air dry. And then you're just gonna go ahead and pack them with your string beans. Then once we get our string beans in here, and our brine comes up to a boil and we pour our brine in, let it cool a little bit, put your lids on, and then you can go ahead and just put it in your refrigerator. It's very simple. Now, if you're not gonna be water bath canning your green beans, check this timestamp so that you can jump ahead to where we go through the pickling process. Now, if you wanna water bath can your green beans, what you'll wanna do first before you put your green beans into your jar is you're gonna to wanna to take them with your jar lifter and you're gonna to wanna to submerge them down into your water bath canner and just keep them nice and hot there in water that you've got simmering. Now, as you're putting your jars into your water bath canner, a good thing to do is to take your finger before you put them into your canner and just run it along the top, carefully, along the top of your jar to make sure there are no chips. And then you also want to just take a look at the jar and make sure there are no cracks. And you can use any type of water bath canner that you have that's appropriate for your stove. The glass top stoves often have a lot of uh, limitations on what type of water bath canner you can use on them, so be sure to check your manufacturer's uh, instructions regarding that. And in addition to water bath canners that go on the stovetop, there are also electric water bath canners, so you've got some options. For water bath canning, I'm gonna leave my canning jars in my water bath canner and my heat on my cooktop here is just set to low and they're just gonna simmer and stay in there and stay nice and hot. Now let's go over the other equipment that we're going to need in order to water bath can these string beans. Well, you already know about the jar lifter. This comes in very handy and you should be able to find most of this equipment at your local grocery store or at one of the big box stores, especially in the summertime when they tend to have a lot of canning supplies in stock. And I'll also put links in the description below where you can find these things online as well. Now, the most important things that you're going to need when it comes to canning, water bath canning or pressure canning for that matter, is your rings, your jar rings, and your lids. Now you can reuse the rings, but you're not supposed to reuse the lids unless you have reusable lids like the Tattlers. But these are just the traditional ball canning lids. And I've got wide mouth lids here. Now when it comes to your rings, you just wanna make sure that you've washed them in warm soapy water and dried them off and you make sure that they're in good condition, not rusty or anything like that. And then you just wanna go ahead and keep them clean until you're ready to move to the canning process. And now, as I said, with the lids, you need new lids. So I'm gonna open this box of lids, and then I'm gonna go ahead and wash these in warm soapy water and let them dry, and then also hang out and stay nice and clean until we're ready to go through the canning process. Now I'm gonna need six lids, because we're doing six pints, and I just wanna show you how these lids look, especially if you're new to the whole canning process. The lids, are gonna be metal on the outside, and then on the underside, they have this little bit of rubber ring all around the rim, and that's what's going to cause it to make a nice seal on your jar. Now in the past, in old-fashioned recipes, you may see that they talk about boiling these lids to make them very nice and clean. However, in more modern recipes, it's recommended not to boil them. And the reason is the boiling can damage this rubber uh, outer ring and then possibly create a false seal or a broken seal when you actually try to go to water bath can uh, whatever it is you're canning. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wash my new lids in nice warm soapy water, let them air dry, and keep them nice and clean till we're ready to can. Next, you're gonna want some type of funnel and some type of ladle, as well as a little magnetized stick here. There's a little magnet on the end here, and this is what helps you pick up your lids so that you're not touching them, you're keeping them very nice and clean when you go to put them onto your jar. And I believe the correct terminology for this might be lid lifter. Then next you're gonna want something called a debubbler. And this just helps you get the bubbles out of your jar before you put your lids on. 
Now this isn't mandatory because you could certainly use a knife to do that as well. But this is very handy because it also has little notches along here that are measurements regarding headspace. And why, what is headspace and why is it important? Well, the reason is you need to measure how much room you have on top of your jar to allow for expansion and so on and so forth based on what you're canning. Some things require a quarter inch headspace, others a half inch headspace, an inch headspace, so on and so forth. And this little tool allows you to put this right into your jar and measure, okay, all of my food uh, is under that half inch headspace mark. Now, if you don't have this, don't worry. You may have a funnel that also measures headspace for you. Either one of these comes in very handy. And if you don't have any of this, if you have a little ruler, you can certainly use that too. Just make sure it's clean and food safe. Now, I took my first jar out of my water bath canner and I emptied out the hot water that was sitting in it. Now, if you are just pickling these to go ahead and put them in your refrigerator, this is where you want to follow along because you'll get your clean jar and we'll get ready with clean hands to start packing our string beans into our jars. Now for flavorings, you can certainly add garlic or dill or other herbs that you like to use to pickle green beans. I don't add garlic, but I do add dill. So these are in essence dilly beans. So what I like to do is go ahead and take a sprig of the dill and I just go ahead and put it in my jar. There's no particular rhyme or reason to how it goes in. Then I'm going to go ahead and start taking my green beans and packing them in tightly into my jar. And you want your green beans to be about four inches long for a pint sized jar. Once you get your string beans packed nice and tightly into your jar, now is the time to pour your brine into the jar. Now you'll want to take your funnel and then get your ladle. I like this ladle because it's got a little hook here that makes it easy in between ladling into each jar. You can hook it on the side of your saucepan and it doesn't fall in. But in any event, so just take this that you've, you've brought your brine up to a boil and then you're going to take your brine and you're simply going to start ladling it into your jar. Now if you're going to be water bath canning these, you want to take your debubbler and you want to just go around and make sure that you get out any air bubbles. It's very easy to do. You just go around like this and make sure that there are no air bubbles. And if any are released and you notice that your liquid goes down, you can easily at this time add more liquid into your jar. Then either using your funnel or your little debubbler that has the measurement tool on the end or a ruler, what you want to do is look for a half inch mark and then you want to take this or your ruler, whatever you're using, and just measure this second notch, the first notch is a quarter inch, the second notch is half an inch, and you just want to measure and make sure that this little bottom here is just on top of the liquid. And this is perfect. I've got a half inch of uh, headspace here. Now, if you want to go ahead and put these in the refrigerator, you're all set. Just let it cool a little bit, then take a storage lid or whatever lid you have that may have come uh, with the jar that you're using, and then just go ahead and put this onto your jar and go ahead and refrigerate this. Let them cool and then they'll be ready to enjoy. But if you're water bath canning them, one step that you may want to take is using a product called pickle crisp. Now you've got salt in the brine which definitely helps uh, create that nice crisp flavor that we like in green beans or in pickles. But pickle crisp is kind of an insurance policy. It adds even more protection to help keep your vegetables crisp. And what it is is calcium chloride. It's basically I believe some sort of mineral, uh, mineral salt. And all you need for a pint sized jar is an eighth of a teaspoon. So, and you can just at this point, just go and sprinkle that right on the top. 
Now the pickle crisp will dissolve nicely in the hot brine and the next thing you want to do is take a clean cloth, I've got a little clean paper towel here, and a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of white vinegar, and all we want to do is go around the rim and make sure it's nice and clean in case any of the brine got on it or if any of the oils from our fingertips got on it. We just want to make sure it's nice and clean and then we'll go around also and dry it. And this is also a nice double check in case any uh, chip developed while you were warming your jar in your canner. Then you want to take your lid lifter, come over here, get one of your lids, put that down on your jar. And then the next thing you want to do is get one of your canning rings and you're going to go ahead and you're going to put your canning ring on and now all you want to do is something that's called finger tight. And what finger tight means is that you, you twist the ring until you feel resistance and then once you feel resistance you just give it a little bit more of a turn. Now you don't want to use any brute force when you do this and the reason that you just want fingertip tight is because all the ring is doing is keeping the lid in place during the water bath canning process. But you want a little bit of looseness there because as it goes through the water bath canning process there will be some air released and then when you take it out of your water bath canner and it comes up to room temperature, that's what causes the seal to tighten and you'll hear the little ping where the little dot on the top of your uh, canning lid uh, will be depressed. And it's when that little button on your lid is depressed, you know that you've got a good seal. So by not having this super tight, you allow for that air to be released, any extra air that may be trapped in this jar. And when that air comes out and then we take it out of the water bath canner and we allow it to come to room temperature, that temperature change is what causes the suction in the lid to seal. And now it's a nice airtight seal and there's no air in your jar, which is what allows this to become shelf stable. Now one thing I want to mention about this whole canning process, we're water bath canning and you can only can using water bath, the, using the water bath canning process if you're canning high acid foods. Low acid foods need to be pressure canned. Now under normal circumstances, if you wanted to just can green beans in water, to then maybe be used uh, as a side dish that you heat up and so on and so forth, you would need to pressure can those. But because we're canning these in a vinegar solution, which now makes them a high acid food, we can water bath can them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this down into my water bath canner where it's gonna stay nice and hot while I go through the process of filling the rest of my jars. Well, I've got all six pint-sized jars with the green beans in them in my water bath canner. Now, you want to make sure that you have at least an inch to two inches of water above the lid of your jars. It's very important to make sure that your jars are completely submerged in the hot water. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the lid on my water bath canner and then I'm going to turn my heat up to high. I'm going to bring this up to a boil and that's when I'm going to start my timer. I want this to boil or process for 10 minutes. Now the reason that I'll process my pint sized jars for 10 minutes is because of the altitude that I'm at. But you need to know what your altitude is because depending what your altitude is determines how long you need to process your jars for. But don't worry because over on my blog post, which will correspond with this video where you'll also have the printable recipe with all these instructions, I'll also list the different altitudes and how many minutes corresponds with that for processing your jars. It may be 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, so on and so forth. Now while we're waiting for this to come up to a boil, there are a couple of important things that I want to discuss with you. 
Number one, should you parboil your green beans before pickling them? And that's a great question. It's really no longer recommended if you're water bath canning them. But how about if you're just pickling them with the hot brine and then putting them in your fridge? There are really differences of opinion on this. Some people will say, no, don't worry about it. Just pack your jars with your string beans, pour your hot brine on them, and then refrigerate them, and you can call it a day. Other people say no. They say you should parboil your string beans for five minutes, which basically means to put them into boiling water for five minutes, then remove them from that boiling water, and then plunge them into ice water to stop the cooking. Now, why is the parboiling called for? And the reason is, is that string beans, which are beans, contain something called lectins. Now, from what I understand from my reading, the lectins in string beans are not as strong a form of lectins as you find in dried beans, like navy beans, kidney beans, chickpeas, so on and so forth. However, even though these lectins in string beans may be more mild, people who are sensitive to lectins may find they have trouble digesting string beans that have not first been parboiled before pickling. So if you have some sort of digestive disorders or you find you uh, have difficulty digesting food, maybe you have acid reflux, uh, GERD, all these different types of things, if you find that you do in general tend to have trouble digesting food, then you may want to think about parboiling your string beans before you pack them into your jar and then before you put the hot brine in and then before you refrigerate them. The second thing that I want to mention is if you're new to canning and you're thinking of what canning books you might find most helpful, I wanted to share with you the ones that I really like. This one, The Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving, this is a classic. Now this is an older book. I believe this might have been published in the 1990s and there were a lot of copies published. So be sure to keep your eyes open at used bookstores in your area because you may very well find uh, this book there. But I highly recommend this. This really covers everything from soup to nuts, so to speak. So that's the ball complete book of home preserving. Second, this is sort of the, and they say it in the title, the all new ball book of canning and preserving. And this is, it's an oversized paperback. This is a great book also. But what's nice about this book is they don't only talk about canning, whether it's water bath canning, like what we're doing today, or pressure canning, they also talk about other ways to preserve food. And one of those ways is fermentation, which you know I've taught you a lot about that and I talk a lot about fermentation. And it's very interesting because this is sort of a one-stop shop book. You can can with this book, but you can also ferment from this book. You'll learn about fermentation. So this is a book that I highly recommend. Then if you're just looking for something that's very easy and simple, if you're really new to canning and you're like, I just really want to start with the very basic recipes, this is the Ball Canning Back to Basics book. And basically all they talk about in here is a foolproof guide to canning jams, jellies, pickles, and more. And it's very easy to understand. It's really written uh, for the beginner. As you see, it's not thick at all. It's a very thin, thin book and it's very reasonably priced and it has as it says up here 100 classic recipes so pretty much everything that you may want to uh, can you know in terms of jams it's primarily obviously devoted to just water bath canning so it's going to talk about jams jellies pickles chutneys things like that all the things you can water bath can so this is a great little book if you're just starting out and you want some very basic recipes with very basic instructions so I'll put links to these books in the description below. But as I said, be sure to check your used bookstores uh, because I often find they have a pretty nice canning section, at least the used bookstores in our area. And a third, I wanna to mention to you that I have an entire playlist, an entire series 
on water bath canning. And it's really addressed to the beginner. I call it Water Bath Canning 101. And I start with the books, and then I move on to the equipment, and then I move on to the various ingredients that you might need, like canning salts and so on and so forth. And then I walk you through some very basic canning recipes. I show you how to make strawberry jam and I show you a low sugar version. I show you a no sugar uh, strawberry jam version. And I also show you how to make jam without commercial pectin. So even if you find that you can't find any pectin, it's all sold out, you can still make jam and I show you how. I also have videos where I show you how to can fruit without sugar. I show you how to can tomatoes. I show you how to can pickles. There's a lot of things that you can can using water bath canning, which I find is a great place to start if you're a beginner. And if you just want to learn how to pickle vegetables and not worry about canning them, you're happy to just go ahead and put them in your refrigerator. I have a whole playlist on that too. I show you how to pickle a whole host of different things, both with sugar and without sugar. And then of course, given that I really enjoy teaching how to make ferments, I also have a playlist where I show you how to ferment all sorts of things, not only vegetables, but condiments and salsas, and a, a, just a wonderful array of things that you can ferment. And the reason that I like to ferment, and it's definitely something that you should consider learning, is because fermented foods are very rich in probiotics. And pro, or probiotics, you know I'm the queen of mispronunciation, <laughs> probiotics. And probiotics are wonderful for our gut health. And scientists tell us the healthier our gut, the healthier we are overall. So definitely take a little time uh, to consider learning how to make ferments. And I walk you through the whole process step by step and I make it very easy for you. Well, I let my jars boil or process for 10 minutes and then I turned off the heat and now I'm gonna remove the lid and I'm gonna let the jars rest in the hot water for five minutes. Now, you'll wanna prepare your surface with something that gives a nice little cushion for your jars to land on when you bring them out of your water bath canner. And this is just one of those little drying mats. These work great, but two folded dish towels would work great also. And while those jars are resting in the water bath canner, I just want to mention to you a little bit about my water bath canner. This is a flat bottom water bath canner. There are also those that have the concave bottom as well, but those are always recommended not to be used on a flat top uh, cook surface, those glass top uh, cooktops like what I have because it can create a suction that then can cause the glass top to crack. Now, flat bottom water bath canners, stovetop water bath canners, uh, can be used on flat cooktops. However, that said, you do want to check with your manufacturer because even some flat glass top cooktops say not to even try this, even if your canner does have a flat bottom. But it's really up to you whether you want to give it a try and experiment or if you want to make sure that you talk with your um, or if you look in your manual that came with your cooktop or look at your manufacturer's website. What I like to do is use my little countertop burner. It's a flat burner but it's a cast iron burner so it's nice and strong. I don't use my water bath canner even though it has a flat bottom on my glass top stove top. I'm a little afraid to take any chances because I would hate to crack my glass top stove top. Now something that's nice about this particular water bath canner and I just want to show you the uh, it, on this lid is a little dial, a little gauge that shows you when uh, your water bath canner has come up to the proper boil for your altitude and then you can start your timer. So that's kind of a nice handy thing. But if I didn't have this, you know, I don't worry. I watch it and when it comes up to a nice rolling boil, uh, when I've used other canners, uh, that's when I usually set my timer. So you can look for this at your grocery store or at the big box stores. Uh, where they sell all the canning equipment. And I'll also put a link uh, to where you can find this online as well. 
Well, I've got my jar lifter here and I'm going to lift out my first can of string beans and you just want to try to keep it as straight as possible and then you just want to bring it right on over to your insulated or cushioned uh, cloth here and just let it rest and we'll be listening for the ping. So let me get the rest of these. Ah, I don't know if you heard that. It's got a little water on top so it didn't make like a loud ping but that's the sound you're looking for. It's that little button in the middle of the canning jar, the canning jar lid that depresses and that's how you know you've got a good seal. Now we're going to let these cool and you're going to want to let them cool for 24 hours and then you want to check and make sure that all of the buttons have been depressed and that way you know you've got a good seal on all of them. If for any reason a button doesn't depress, don't worry, you can just refrigerate it. But after they've had a chance to cool and, and you're going to leave these at room temperature and you know that they're all well sealed, you want to actually remove the rings before you put them into your pantry. And the reason you want to remove the rings is that if you leave the ring on and for some reason the seal fails, it will reseal because of the ring holding it in place. The lid will reseal. But in the meantime, between the time that the, the seal failed and it resale, re, uh, resealed, oxygen would have gotten in there and then the food can start to spoil. So that's why we always want to remove our rings. Ah, another ping. That little ping sound when the button depresses is music to a canner's ear. Well, if you'd like more pickling recipes as well as fermentation recipes, be sure to click on this video over here where I show you how to make pickled beets and a beautiful fermented giardiniera, which is the Italian vegetable mix, all sorts of wonderful, tasty ferments and pickles. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.